Hey, hey, creators, welcome back. We are going to jump right into episode 9.4 of Create with Cubelets. In this episode, we are looking at creating programs that use code blocks found in the acting submenu. Next up is the toggle motor direction block. This block works for cubelets with motors and can toggle or switch the direction a motor will spin. But when should that occur? Let's start by describing the desired behavior in plain English. How about, when something gets close to my robot, I want to change the direction it drives. That's a pretty simple, general description, but just by the way it is written, I can tell I'm going to need to create some simple logic. How can we create an if-then or conditional statement with Cubelets Blockly? For that, we need a bit of logic. So head to the logic submenu. Grab the big if-do block. This block is essential for adding conditional statements to your Cubelets programs, so drag it into your canvas. We are going to modify this block by clicking on the little blue settings icon. This brings up some modification options. If we drag the else segment onto the puzzle piece, uh, then it modifies the shape of the block. So now we have an if then else statement. Go ahead and click to close. So let's refine our desired behavior and put a little more pseudocode into our desired definition. Instead of when something gets close to my robot, I want it to change directions when it drives, I'm going to describe the behavior as follows. If the block value is over 240, then toggle the motor direction, else the drive wheel should move like normal. Let's start with some simple things to fill in the puzzle. Let's start at the top with the if the block value is over 240 statement. For that, we need to go back to the logic menu and grab this equation block. Notice that it fits nicely next to the if part of the puzzle piece. Now we have the start of a conditional, if blank equals blank. But we only want to act if the block value is over 240. So let's alter the statement so that it reads the way we want it to, if the block value is over 240. But where did we find the block value? It's a variable, so go into the variable submenu. Then find the item block with the dropdown. This allows you to pick or call a variable for your program. In this case, set the dropdown menu to block value and place it in the first opening. Then we are going to use the dropdown function to change the operator. In this case, I'm going to pick greater than. So now the conditional reads, if the block value is greater than blank. Just need to grab a number from the math slash number set menu, then change it to 240 to finish this puzzle. Now we have a program that reads, if the block value is greater than 240, then blank, else blank. If we go back to our pseudocode goal, if the block value is over 240, then toggle motor direction, else the drive wheels should move like normal. The next instruction segment is the toggle motor direction. So we are going to go to the acting menu and grab the toggle motor direction uh, function. Now our statement reads correct. If the block value is over 240, then toggle the motor direction. But there's a hidden element that we need to account for. Remember how fast computers can act or go through instructions? Remember, it's really fast. So we need to slow it down. So we have time to get out of the way when the motor toggles, otherwise it might switch directions many times while it detects a value over 240 it might create the perception that our code only works some of the time. This is a bug that could be hard to figure out unless you remember that computers and therefore robots can act very, very quickly. So let's put in a little wait command from the timing submenu. In this case, it's probably too long uh, to have a full second. So how about we change that to a third of a second or about 330 milliseconds? This should avoid the hidden bug in our code and allowed the program to work right away. Let's return now to our pseudocode goal. If the block value is over 240, then toggle motor direction, else the drive wheels should move like normal. Check and check. We've got the first two elements coded. Now it's time to tackle the last statement, else the drive wheels should move like normal. Well, let's focus on that statement. We know that setting the actuator value to the block value will make that statement happen. So just grab the set actuator value to block, 
Then I'll copy and paste the block value block and add it to the end of the program. And you've got a bit of code that reads set the actuator value to the block value. Finally, add this statement into the else section. Now we have a program that reads if the block value is over 240, then toggle the motor direction and wait for 330 milliseconds, else set the actuator to the block value. Done, right? Well, just like the hidden element of time, we need to introduce one more thing to make this program work. Variables are basically like a little box where something is kept. The block value is a variable and we use it a few times in this program, but we never tell the cubelet how to create a block value. So we need to add that into our program. Otherwise, there's nothing to fill the box of block value. So our program won't see anything and our robot won't move. So to set a variable, we need to go to the variable submenu and pick the set item to block. We are going to place this at the top of our program and we can insert it by dragging it into place until the highlight indicates it will fit. In the drop down, select block value. Then we are going to grab a new code block from the thinking menu. In this case, we are going to grab the block called the weighted average. Think and act cubelets generally get their block values by listening to other cubelets. They perform a special internal calculation of all the block values they receive and their relative distance to their cubelet. After that calculation is done, they come up with a single number called the weighted average. But how it's calculated isn't really the point. The weighted average is just cubelet speak for the way that think and act cubelets listen to other cubelets by setting the block value to the weighted average. This cubelet will listen to other cubelets and then set its block value to the weighted average of what those cubelets are saying, just like the default personalities of all the other ACT cubelets. The difference comes after that with the program we just built. Now, before we program our drive cubelet, I want to point out one more important thing. I connected the drive cubelet so the wheels aren't touching the table. This way, if my drive cubelet were to suddenly start moving, my drive cubelet won't drive my whole robot construction off the table. It's an important tip to remember whenever you're programming with cubelets. So let's program our selected drive cubelet and wait for the process to complete. When it is ready, I'm going to build a simple three block robot with the battery distance and our newly programmed drive cubelet. See how the robot behaves like normal until a high block value is reached? Then the robot switches directions and can drive the other way. Keep playing with this robot for a little bit and when you're done, reset that drive cubelet back to default. And when you're ready to learn more, check out episode number 9.5 to keep exploring Cubelets Blockly. Until next time, have fun creating with Cubelets. <laughs>